What is going on guys, it's Blurry here, back with another Trit Report. Glad you guys are here and could join me. Today, we have a Trit Report on uh, Amanitas. I'm pretty sure I have not done one on these before. I think I've read one out though for, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I read one out for Ricky or you know, someone who's, that's no one's channel. If you guys may remember that. But this is just a crazy looking report right here. The title is called Puzzling Out a Recipe and a magic experience and it contains a lot of drugs uh, the main one he has is Amanita Muscaria then we have Ayahuasca uh, we have magic mushrooms and we have Syrian root to you know basically potentiate the others basically it's kind of what Syrian root is mainly used for by uh by Psychonauts let me get into a better position so my chair shuts up a bit I have the squeakiest chair in the world guys if you guys didn't know um, but before we get into the report, let me quickly shout out the channel and Patreons. We have Carlos, Spicy, Wiener, Third, Zell, Prof, Callum, Kirby, Nick, Conky, Val, Skates, Mike, Sterlock, J, Mac, Pepe, Harambe, Nick, Poker, The Archaic, Bard, Marlin, Chase, and Shagward. Big thank you to all those guys for enabling me to keep posting to the channel. This guy's body weight is 130 pounds. Uh, he consumes 1 gram of mushrooms, 12.5 grams of Amanitas, 2 grams of Syrian Rue, 40 grams of Psychotria viridis, and 60 grams of Benisteriopsis capi. I have no idea if I said those last few right. They are basically what's going into the ayahuasca, I'm guessing. Um, someone, if you guys know anything about those two compounds, can inform us all in the comments below. Uh, but if you guys do enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like and a comment, as it does help out the video and the channel a ton. And I would very much appreciate it. But without further ado, guys, let's get into it. This is my account as a first-time ayahuasca brewer and user trying to puzzle out a workable recipe using conflicting information gathered from the internet. I post this in the hope that it may help others in their experimentation. It's quite long and detailed because I was exploring many questions about optimal preparation and consumption. I focus on these aspects. First, let me say about myself that I am a PhD student in cognitive psychology, interested in consciousness and the workings of the mind. I've taken a graduate psychopharmacology class and done lots of reading on the subject. I've been a lifelong empiricist and atheist until I was introduced to psychedelics by my boyfriend about four months ago, which has spurred a sort of spiritual awakening and exploration. Starting out with small doses of psilocybin mushrooms, which he grew himself, I have worked my way up from mild trips to a full-blown 6-gram experience. I have also used weed a bit, salvia a few times, it was interesting, but too short-lasting for me. And also, Amanita Muscaria. My typical drug of choice is alcohol, both beer and red wine, rarely liquor, and I drink several times a week. I've also tried nootropics and antidepressants. My boyfriend is a very experienced psychedelic user of at least 20 years duration, but has never tried ayahuasca and had always wanted to. We wanted to use the brew for meaningful spiritual exploration, not simply as a new or more intense high. He also is a near daily user of cannabis and used some throughout the experience detailed below. I did not. So we decided to welcome in the year 2012 by brewing some. I tried to find an appropriate recipe online by browsing the internet. This was the first problem, as there is extreme variation in recipes, measures, and methods. We wanted to start out with an authentic traditional recipe, just Benisteriopsis capi and Psychotria viridis, with no other additives. However, I found recipes that called for 1 to 1, 2 to 1, and 3 to 1 ratios of Cappy to Chakruna. Even more confusing, some recipes called for a certain number of Chakruna leaves, not a given weight. Leaf size was not specified either. 
And while some recipes specified fresh Tricorina, few mentioned dried. More often, recipes just gave me a weight, not mentioning fresh or dried at all. I was left wondering which to use, and if there was any difference in potency between the two, suspecting that there must be. As mushroom users know, there's a big difference between the weight of fresh and dried that you should use. Likewise, when cooking, you must use much more fresh herb than dried. Take basil and red and white, etc. To further confuse the issue, at least three different types of capi were available in several different forms as well. Shredded, powdered, or whole young vine. Allusions were made to different characteristics of different strains and colors, such as white is hardest to work with, but nothing specific. Most recipes just said capi. How do I decide? In the spirit of experimentation, I ordered four ounces each of white shredded bark. Yellow powdered and young red vine said to be from a strain from Terence McKenna's plantation. I also ordered 150 grams of dried chacruna leaves. The leaves arrived broken into many pieces. There was no way to tell how many leaves there had been originally. Good thing I decided to go by weight. The leaves were a dark blackish green in colour and slightly dusty smelling. The shredded capi looked and smelled like rough mulch. My goal was to use a 1 to 1 ratio of about 200 grams of capi to 200 grams of chacruna, and these were the best approximations I could get based on how the items were packaged and sold. Following is the digest of a lot of conflicting recipes and accounts that I read. At least 50 from both websites and academic journals. I found several recurring themes. 1. Some accounts suggested that a smaller proportion of capi to chacruna resulted in less stomach upset. We were quite cognizant of the fact that we might vomit or have diarrhea and wanted to minimize it. So I settled on using a clone to a 1 to 1 ratio of capi to chacruna. I ended up using the white shredded bark and red young vines for a total of 224 grams of capi and the whole bag of 150 grams of chacruna. 2. Some recipes advised throwing everything in a big pot together and boiling for 10 to 12 hours. Others said to prepare each plant separately and to do multiple washes and extractions, then to either combine them at the end or to drink separately. The timing varied from boiling each wash from 5 minutes to 2 to 3 hours. It seemed from reading many accounts that the most stomach upset slash vomiting occurred from the throw everything together and boil vigorously for 10 to 12 hour recipes, while the do several washes Simmer and strain recipes led to less vomiting and nausea. 3. Some recipes said to add a teaspoon or so of lemon juice, lime juice, or vinegar to each wash, though they didn't say why. Later reading suggested that acidifying the water sped up the extraction process, thus requiring a shorter amount of time simmering. Perhaps that was why some recipes said to boil for as little as 5 minutes per wash. A few recipes called for using grapefruit, orange, or pineapple juice to make the resulting liquid sweeter. However, in their results, the brewers who used these methods often complained the ayahuasca didn't work, so I steered away from using these juices, which aren't as acidic as lemon or lime or vinegar. A few accounts said to use anywhere from 250 to 1000 milligrams of citric acid, presumably dumped out of a capsule or a dissolved dietary supplement. One recipe used muratic acid, 
which I assumed meant muriatic acid, which is liquid hydrochloric acid, a corrosive acid used in swimming pools and for cleaning masonry and doesn't seem at all a good idea for something that you're going to drink. That recipe produced vomiting according to its author. 4. Some recipes said to boil, others said to never boil, only to simmer. I mostly simmered, even though that meant it took longer to reduce the liquid. Later I read that simmering, rather than boiling, resulted in a sweeter brew, due to no caramelization of the plant material, at below boiling temperatures. My brew was bitter, but not too bad. One discussion thread I found online said not to boil as you would destroy slash vaporize, they said, the DMT by doing so. However, no other account said anything about this. Nonetheless, I tried to mostly simmer the liquids as I certainly did not want to lose any DMT, though I think it must vaporize at a higher temperature than boiling. 5. Most recipes were quite clear against using aluminium pots, saying toxic aluminium salts could result, especially with an acidifying agent. I made sure my pans were non-aluminium. Pyrex is a good idea. 6. Most recipes advised using distilled water to avoid any added chemicals, such as chlorine. I did so about 4.5 gallons altogether. 7. Many experienced users recommended brewing two doses per person in case one was lost to vomiting. Of course, defining a dose was quite confusing due to all the conflicting recipes. I defined a dose as approximately 50 grams of capi and 50 grams of dried chacruna, though the proportions I ended up using were slightly different. I ended up consuming extract from about 60 grams capi and 40 grams chacruna. 8. Some recipes said to drink the capi about 30 minutes prior to the chacruna. Others said to mix together and drink at the same time. We decided to keep our separate and 30 minutes apart, thinking that way the MAOI in the capi would have time to work before the DMT containing chacruna. 9. Many recipes advise straining, filtering several times and or letting the sediment naturally settle over time, suggesting the sediment caused gagging and triggered vomiting, so we did so. The Brew Preparation T-9 at 9.30am I added 112 grams of white shredded capi bark, 112 grams of young red capi vine, two thirds of a gallon of distilled water, and a big squirt of lemon and lime juices to a saucepan and brought it to a boil. I then simmered and stirred it for an hour. The liquid turned a dark reddish brown immediately. I had tried to further grind the young red vine in my coffee grinder, but had no luck. It kept getting caught and wouldn't really grind, so I just broke it into smaller pieces and threw it in the pot. In retrospect, I wish I had pounded it or crushed it or tried harder to break open the red vine because I feel like the resulting extract was weak. At the same time, I put the 150 grams of dried, broken up chacruna leaves in a different pot with another two thirds of a gallon of water and a squirt of lemon and lime juices and brought it to a boil. I then simmered it for two hours, stirring quite often. At first the liquid was dark greenish brown, but over several hours it became black. It looked like black bean soup. T-8 At 10.30am, I took the capi liquid out, filtered it through a wire mesh strainer, and put it in a smaller saucepan to reduce. I added another two thirds of a gallon of water, plus more lemon and lime juices to the original capi vine slash bark, and simmered it for another hour or so. The instructions I found online had suggested simmering each wash for anywhere from five minutes to two to three hours. I compromised on one to two hours. 
Now I had three pans going, the original Capi and Chacruna, and one more Capi liquid only. T minus 7. At 11.30 a.m., I strained the Chacruna. Now I had four pans going, the two original brews and two liquids to reduce. I returned the Chacruna to the pot, added more distilled water and more lemon and lime juices, and brought it to a boil, then simmered again. T minus 6. Through to T minus 3. I repeated this process one more time, each with the Capi and Chacruna, so that each gave three washes total. By 3.30, I had only the two pots with liquid reducing on the stove and was done with the vine and leaves, which I composted. At various times, I strain each liquid, first using a small mesh wire strainer, like one of those permanent coffee filters, then later trying to use a paper coffee filter. The sediment clogged the paper coffee filter, and I gave up on that method. T minus 2. I kept filtering, simmering, and reducing the liquids until I had slightly less than two cups of each. This took until about 4.30 p.m. At this point, I poured each out into a large glass container so that further sediment could settle to the bottom. Some side notes, on the cooking process, that is. For at least the first few hours, my kitchen smelled strongly of dirt and mulch. At first, it was a very acrid, pungent smell, and it spread throughout the house. However, the smell mellowed very much over time, and after a few hours was non-objectionable. Also, quite a lot of steam was produced throughout this entire process. I had the kitchen exhaust fan going for hours, and a window cracked open even though it was snowing outside. Windows throughout the house fogged over. We felt as though we were actually in a steamy rainforest. Personal preparation and consumption. Knowing that the Capi is a MAOI, we abstained from tryptamine-rich foods all day, but didn't entirely fast. I had coffee with non-fat milk at about 8 a.m., but no food. But my boyfriend had black coffee and a piece of dry toast with strawberry jelly at noon, as well as a clementine in the late afternoon. I had two to three cups of peppermint tea. I hoped the peppermint might help reduce nausea. T zero. At 6.15 p.m., we were ready. We had a slightly less than two cups total of each liquid, which I had calculated to be four doses. I scooped out about a half a C of capi for each of us, trying to leave most of the sediment in the bottom. At this point, the liquid was no longer a dark reddish brown, but a light yellowish brown. After offering a prayer, we sipped our drinks over about 15 to 20 minutes. We had read that sipping it slowly over time helped reduce nausea. It was bitter, but not as bad as I'd been expecting. T0.5 After about half an hour, I scooped out about half a C of the chacruna liquid for each of us. This was dark black like black bean soup, and had a lot of sediment. Both of us felt fine before drinking the chacruna. No nausea at all. Once again, we sipped slowly over about 15 to 20 minutes. It was very bitter and chalky, much worse tasting and grittier than the capi, but not awful. As my boyfriend neared the end of his, he noted that it contained a lot of sediment, as soon as he said that, he said he was going to lose it and ran to the bathroom. He spent about the next 10 minutes vomiting up everything. I continued to sip mine slowly, avoiding the sediment. At one point when I neared the sediment, I nearly gagged, but was able to stop it. Also, he had consumed a clementine right before the capi, 
while I hadn't eaten anything but the free saltines around noon and the peppermint tea. Wikipedia, citing Ott, says that traditionally caffeine and citrus are avoided prior to ayahuasca consumption, though recent researchers are casting doubt on whether these dietary restrictions are necessary. T plus one. I feel fine. No nausea. My boyfriend feels better after purging, but doesn't want to try any more ayahuasca. We sit back to wait, watching some videos. I'd read that onset of effects could take anywhere from 20 minutes to 2 hours, and more toward the longer end if you sipped it slowly rather than chugging it all at once, so I'm trying to be patient. T plus 150. I examine myself for signs of effects. I feel slightly warm and flushed, a feeling I associate with serotonin. Maybe a bit of tightness around my eyes like I get with mushroom onset, but no closed eye visuals or other effects. We close our eyes and perhaps imagine that we are seeing the slightest flashes of colour. I am impatient. My boyfriend smokes a bowl. T plus two. Still nothing. I conclude that the brew didn't work. I pull out a bag of Syrian roux and chew up about a gram's worth of seeds, thinking maybe I didn't make the kapi strong enough or drink enough for the MAOI to work. I pour myself an additional quarter C each of both kapi and chakruna and start sipping. I also eat about 10 saltines, figuring it's a lost cause. I'm feeling good, chatty, energized, bubbly, which I attribute to the MAOI effects of the kapi, but I feel nothing else. In the meantime, my boyfriend is feeling better and decides to try and salvage the evening by brewing a psilocybin mushroom tea. It is New Year's Eve, after all, and we are afraid to drink alcohol due to the MAOI. We have a small amount of shrooms, about 1 to 2 grams, estimated at enough for one person to have a very mild experience. In a what the heck, why not mode, we toss the mushrooms in a pan, along with about 1 gram of crushed Syrian roux. Also an MAOI, we hope it might potentiate and stretch the mushrooms. We also added 25 grams of Amanita muscaria. We have been meaning to try it. He's never had any, but I have actually tested myself on 5 grams brewed into a tea a few weeks ago. I found them to have a very mild effect, similar to drinking a glass of wine, and no nausea. These are a mixture of grade A large free Latvian caps and grade A plus small one Washington caps ordered from the internet. We also add a slice of fresh ginger and herbal peppermint based tea and also it contains milk, recommended by several online accounts to go with the Amanita. Tea plus 2.25 We drink our tea over about 15 to 20 minutes, wary of nausea from the Amanitas, but we experience none. We are listening to Icaros of the Shipibo people culled from the internet to get us in the proper spiritual frame of mind. T plus 250 or so. Onset is rapid. Something has finally worked in a major way. I don't know if it was the extra MAOI from the additional Kapi or Syrian Rue or the shrooms or simply time. At this point I lose all sense of time. The rest of the night is sheer magic for me, though not quite as strong for my boyfriend since he lost most or all of his ayahuasca, and I had an additional gram of Syrian rue. Let me just say the experience was everything I had read about and hoped for. Totally cosmic, spiritual, out of body, I am full of love and gratitude and feel a sense of timelessness and eternity and oneness with the universe. I feel my boyfriend and I are dreaming its creation. I feel whole and complete 
and perfect. I feel accepting of every part of myself, even the parts I dislike and try to hide. I feel healed. I have wonderful open eye visuals and closed eye. I want this moment to last forever. I feel suspended in time. Spirits walk with us and we commune with them. My boyfriend sees the Mayan calendar unraveled in his mind and speaks with ancient shamans. In contrast to my previous experience with mushrooms, which were more autobiographical in tone, this one is strictly about myself and my relation to the cosmos. My experience, experience lasts roughly from 10pm till 4.30am when I start to come out of the bliss phase, but I'm still seeing splashes of colour with my eyes open. My boyfriend's experience, well, not nearly as intense, ended about one and a half hours previously. Throughout this roughly six hours, he also smoked a bit, estimating that in total he consumed two bowls of what he called high-grade weed. T plus 10. Aftermath. We feel a little twitchy, and my muscles feel as if I worked out my upper body with weights and did a bit of light running or biking. My whole body feels stiff when I stand up to go to the bathroom, and walking feels strange. Mentally, I feel centered, energized, blissful, just really, really good. We have a bit of trouble falling asleep. We have some great sex. Body sensations are definitely heightened. And stay awake for another hour or so. We finally fall asleep by about 6am and sleep to about 10am. We awake ravenous and have the best food we have ever tasted in our lives. He feels tired and heavy and unmotivated all day, which he partially attributes to the weed, but I continue to feel great, with only a bit of a headache and jaw clench. T plus 40. The next morning, I start to feel a bit shaky, sweaty and lightheaded, a feeling I get when tapering off antidepressants too quickly. I pop a 100mg 5-HTP capsule and quickly feel better, except the headache slash jaw clench returns, but it's not too bad. Overall, I still feel great and energized. Both of us rated this as one of the most spiritual experiences we have ever had. I don't know what single element or combination of elements finally worked, but it was simply magic. We're looking forward to trying a slightly different version, made with Syrian roux and mimosa and we'll definitely try the mushroom slash Syrian roux combo on its own again, as well as Amanitas on their own, or maybe with Syrian roux. But a word of warning, make sure you know what you're dealing with, especially as regards the, to the a MAOI. Look it up online, and make sure you eat correctly. Be prepared for vomiting or diarrhea. I was lucky, I had no nausea at all, but I tend to have a strong stomach. I believe the low proportion of Capi to Chukruna, the slow sipping, and the filtering out of the majority of sediment all help to reduce the nausea and vomiting experience. Admittedly, in scientific terms, this was not a clean experiment. There was too many variables. However, I think the differences between our two experiences the fact that mine lasted nearly two hours longer and was so blissful was due to the additional MAOI and DMT I consumed. Since my boyfriend vomited so early, we assume he lost all of his DMT and most of the MAOI from the Kapi. And as an experienced mushroom user, he said he got much more of an effect out of the paltry 0.5 to 1 grams of mushrooms he consumed than he would have expected which we attribute to the MAOI in this Syrian roux. Well, there we have it, guys. There is a ton of, like, I don't even know what's under it. Some scientific, what do you call it? References or whatever, where you link to some stuff? I don't know. 
But that was a mind-boggling report. Um, sounds like just an awesome, awesome fucking time. I've been really into psychedelics myself lately. I've been doing acid a fair bit. Um, you know, nothing really story-worthy, I will say. Um, the last story-worthy one was when I did 800 micrograms. But I do plan to get a bunch of mushrooms soon. Hopefully that uh, goes through and I can get those mushrooms. Because I might make a live video of myself tripping in the forest. Just consuming like 5 grams of uh, mushrooms. Um, you know, 5 grams of the cubes. Maybe if they're like subs, I'll do like 3.5 to 4 grams or something like that. But that was a dope report. A really cool mix of substances there, but definitely is a shame that a dude threw up. That would be shit. This is just like, this is like almost like a dream thing for me to try. Like, just a combination like this. It just seems like, because I love combinations like this when you have a bunch of different times of psychedelics. The only time it's ever really happened to me is through the Jedi flip, and it's just such a, it's like a journey. You feel like it's a lot more of a journey than just taking you know, eating some shrooms quickly, or, you know, taking a tab quickly, it's just like a one and done thing, it's cool when you, I don't know, something cool about when you're already tripping balls, and you got to do the next thing, the next thing, they weren't obviously doing that, but I don't know, it just sounds like a journey of a friggin' night, it sounds bloody awesome to me, really, really awesome, um, definitely, I think I'm gonna get that Syrian rue, I, some dude on my Instagram, what's his name again? No, I forget. It's one of the channel members that I'm pretty sure he um, said he'll send me some Syrian Roux. So um, I might get some off him. If not, I want to order online and I'll consume that with my uh, mushrooms I'm going to get soon. But anyway, guys, I really hope you guys did enjoy this experience here. I mean, this this video, <laughs> sorry, and the experience as well. The experience of watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the experience of that. And <laughs> leave a like if you guys did. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Um, let me know what sediment is in the comments below, because I've got no idea what that means. And also let me know what half a C means, because I don't know what that means. Is that like some cooking woman language or something? I don't know what that means. Like half a cap, half a cup, half a something. I'm guessing it means half a cup. I don't know. I don't do cooking, guys. But yeah, leave a like and comment, because that means a ton to me. And I'll see you guys very, very soon in another video. Peace out.